Okay, sorry again for delay. Uh, we solved all the challenges. So, Igor, please <laughs> start the talk. Okay, I think this is the most complicated setup they had today. <laughs> There was one question left from the previous speaker, so people raise hands for the iOS developer, but how many of you are Android developers? Okay, a good number. So the, ah, here it is. The presentation will be a little bit under specific, but I'm more covering some design terms and some ways of thinking than basically the code and things like that. So, <coughs> hello everyone, I am Igor Chordas from Mendawa. I'm Android senior developer there. I have been working on Android apps for five or six years, creating apps and bugs. And this presentation is going to be about things like this. So I'm going to try to cover some part of these uh, terms and to explain uh, how do you style text on Android and what are some good tricks to uh, leave a good impression in, on your users. And this is going to be followed by the, some using XML code and some explanations. So uh, the first thing that I would like to explain uh, is when positioning text, uh, it's quite important uh, the vertical alignment of elements. So uh, how far each text is from the top and from the rest of the lines is quite important. So on the left side, you can see it's a single text view and there is this little line. That line is called, called based line. Uh, that is uh, a property of the font itself. So most of the letters should like sit on that line. And on the bottom, you can see the orange rectangle. The orange rectangle is representing a bounding box. A uh, binding box is basically a box that you can put around the text. Uh, both terms are interesting here regarding the, <coughs> regarding the text positioning, because in Android, uh, most of the vertical alignment and alignment in containers is done using baselines. Uh, but for example, uh, some design tools, actually most of them uh, by default, to use the bounding boxes for alignment. So when you get from your uh, designer some uh, file explaining you what to do, they usually use the bounding boxes. So if you put those values into your Android app, it will not basically work. So what is uh, suggested there? is to clearly communicate with designers what you need. Because mostly all of those, those tools they use have just a checkbox and then they measure distances in baseline. So it's much more helpful. Also, if you don't have a designer or don't want to talk to people, you can just use these material values. So it's multiples of four, so 4 dp, 8 dp, 16 dp, and then just position a text like that. There is a lot of research that uh, Google guys did so this material guideline is quite applicable to most of the apps. So how do we control this baseline thing on Android? So you can see there is this property, XML property called layered margin top. That one should be used when you have like two text views and you want to position one below the other. That term on the first screen called gladding is, an, is a word they used when they used to like set the letters up in lead, and then to move one line below the other, they'd put a box of lead. So that's, that is why it's called leading. So the leading was like old school margin top. So I can use margin top to move this up and down. Uh, but preferably, since we don't want to create multiple text views to represent multi-line text, uh, we should use this uh, line space multiplier. So it's just used as a multiplier. Uh, you increase the value to to have uh, more white space or decrease the value to have less white space. Um, a little bit uh, more precise control is with this line spacing extra. There you specify exact values, but keep the multiplier at one. Uh, so uh, 
except the baseline, what is also quite important about the text? It's the size of the text. Uh, we all know that something seems important if it's large. So the larger the text is, it's more important. So that is like why the headlines are large. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> sorry. Also, using multiple sizes for elements can uh, like create the order of importance. So if you have three sizes, then uh, subconsciously user knows which one of those elements is more important than the rest. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, if you have too many of those sizes, then it creates confusion because then user like needs to compare seven sizes and to decide which one is larger. And then based on that, they need to decide which one is more important. So do keep your uh, sizes to a certain set. That set is usually called a scale. A uh, good scale to follow is this in Android typography. Again, those designers do great work. And it works usually. Uh, how we do that on Android? Uh, there is uh, this text size value. So we just set the size. It's set in scale independent pixels. Well, they're called like that, I don't know. But the whole point is uh, scale independent pixels uh, do take into account the user's uh, font preference, uh, while the density independent pixels don't take that into account. So it's much better to use that. Uh, also, uh, to access those Android values, if you don't want to like code them in your app, you can also use this, these styles provided in a team. So you can set different styles. There is like headline, body one, body two, but do also note that some of the styles set some other properties on text. For example, I think this is body one and it's bold because someone decided that style should be bold. Uh, <coughs> other principle, because it's quite hard sometimes to align the text, to have everything looking how you want. Uh, it might be a better approach to just let the system handle the sizing of text and just let the text fit how many space there is. So there is this, usually with designers, they create you some screens. If they are good designers, if they have time, they create you multiple screens and then they say, this is how it needs to look. But uh, usually they will not create you like 10,000 of screens because you need 10,000 of screens because there are a lot of device configurations, resolutions. And also there is this lovely thing called multi-window Android. There is also this lovely thing, font display size. So each device can show whatever it wants, basically. And no designer is going to like define all of that. So you could just let the system handle some of those things. Uh, so how we do that on Android is you use this app compared text view. It uh, has certain attributes by which you enable the text sizing. So this is auto size text type. So if I enable that, there is enabled uniform and none is disabled. So if I en enable that, the text will auto size depending on the space it, it has. Uh, again, regarding that thing on the mercy of the framework, limit yourself to a set of sizes. So there are other additional options to like set the minimum size, maximum size, set the step granularity, how far each size is. Or you could even hard code some sizes in array and then let the system load those. So that's one approach. Uh, also, <coughs> with the sizes, do keep in mind that it's much more important for a user to be able to see your text than to be pixel perfect with the design. Because if someone does not like how the app looks, that's their problem. But if someone cannot see what is in your app, then that's your problem also. Uh, if you put too large text, you might like want the text to be large because of the layout or because of some other reason, but you might not want to have the emphasis on that text. A good way to reduce that is to put the opacity on that text. Then you can tone the text down, and then there is no so much visual attention on that. Also, good use for the, for the opacity is to mix the text you have over some background. Usually in Android apps, there is a lot of content coming from the network. It's usually user generated. It's some pictures. You want to put some text over that. It's quite impossible to like fit the color, to guess the color what the, the content will be. But you can like fake some, uh, you can fake fit uh, with the opacity to, to the images. So uh, also there is that trick that you can indicate to the user there is more text to read or more things to be scrolled by fading a certain part of the interface. Uh, also, do note that when using opacity, uh, it uses the alpha blending, 
when rendering text. That is a little bit more performance intensive than not using the alpha blending. And uh, as said here, uh, fonts have different screens. Uh, they have different brightness, uh, different screen ratios. The users might be using the phone in sunlight or not or at night. So the thing we are trying to do with the opacity is quite subtle. And those subtle changes might not look on your device like they're going to look on some other user's device. For example, here is the obvious property. Alpha, you said the percentage of alpha. But uh, for example, here on this AMOLED screen, uh, if I turn down the opacity, uh, the text melts into the background. But that is completely not what's shown on the, on the projector. Uh, so do keep that in mind, because the opacity change is quite subtle, but when it works, it does create you the effect. So here is like dark background. You can still see this opacity, uh, this text. So now text is brought up front, but if I reduce the alpha, yeah, it kind of works, but it, it works much better on the, on the amyloid screen. So do keep that in mind that this is a subtle change and keep that in mind. Next thing I would like to point out is that except opacity, you could also use the text color. Uh, you can again bring some emphasis to, to some elements, or if your app is like uh, text uh, heavy, but you would like to have your branding, some experience in your app, but don't have a place to put your logo or, or icon, uh, you can just uh, set certain parts of the text uh, uh, to be your brand color. Then the user will feel that they're inside your app, not in the browser for example. Uh, also, again, too many colors are not good. If it looks ugly, it also tries to create that thing. What is more important? If I have like five colors, is orange more important than the purple or not? So do try to avoid that. <coughs> also, what is optimal is whatever colors you use, and even when using brightness, always keep in mind the contrast ratio. Contrast ratio is really important because as mentioned, if someone cannot see their, your app, it's your fault basically. Uh, you can follow design, uh, material guidelines. Again, there are some good values there. Or you could go wild, but always keep in mind to use some tool to check the contrast ratio. There is this handy web tool. There are some Android apps. There are Photoshop plugins and things like that. Uh, so the obvious one, it's the text color. You can set color to anything. So you can see some, since this is a random color of the text, I might get, eh, this is, no. It looks green here, but it's black. Yeah, the contrast here is not good, for example. But this one, you can read it easily. So this one is also good. And the tool would give me, an, uh, would give me a value of how good my contrast is. So I can know. I don't need to like, guess, because as you can see, it looks completely different on the presentation than it's on the, on the screen. But the tool will know and will tell me, yeah, that's good or it's not good. Also, a good way to use text colors, because I said you should use a size of, uh, set of text colors, is to use text color primary from the team, or text color from the team, or you can even use the color accent. I used white here as accent, because in this presentation, the white part is more important. So that is why I like, accented it with the white color. Another important thing is the letter spacing. Uh, the letter spacing uh, uh, regards the vertical, uh, the horizontal spaces between characters. So if you have some strange fonts, or if you just have a small text, uh, characters might be too close for the user to comfortably read. So words basically become a mess of black. You know, the user cannot read that. Uh, also, if you have like a too large of a, of a font, or especially if it's uppercase, uh, text can become like disconnected. So if you have like a title on your screen, it says my app, you want the user to, to read it my app, not M-I-A-P-P. -P, because if you have too large font and it's all uppercase, that can happen. Uh, also be conservative about the percentage of reduction. <coughs> also, Designers usually do think about this, even if their tools by default don't export that. Go as a designer, they probably did think about that one. Uh, how we do that on Android? So it's the obvious letter spacing attribute. So I can increase it. Do know that it breaks the text now. I can increase it more, or I can reduce it. Yeah, for some reason, if you need this, you can also do that. The value is in EMS values. EMS means it just multiplies the large M size by that number. But 
if you treat it as just a multiplier of your weight of the character, that's also okay. Uh, also, uh, you may have um, seen that when I extended the character spacing, uh, there were some line breakings. So not all text can fit on one line, obviously, but we don't want to have like orphan words or a lot of white space. For example, on AMOLED screens, you would waste more power with white space, but usually not getting anything from that. Also, it looks ugly. Uh, you need to let the Android framework do this for you because if you don't want to like set new lines in each of the text and then make sure that looks good. Uh, the, the algorithm is quite a complex. It does some guesses. It's, it's kind of wasteful, but it does produce something of value to you. Uh, also, when using affination, uh, Android break, breaks the words apart, so each break is a new word, basically, in the cache, so it increases the memory use. So do keep that in mind. So, this is how you control this. So there is a break strategy. There is this balanced, which tries to keep all lines, lines equal. There is this high quality. It will look like more like a book. And there is like this simple one, which I have no idea what it does, because Android Docs say line breaking uses simple strategy. So help. thank you, Android Docs. Also, there is this other property called hyphenation frequency. You can see here that I don't have hyphens now. Also, do know the last word, the, if I use the hyphenation, you can see it's, break, it's broken. So I know that this really long word is one word. So even if I don't know what it means, I can Google it. But without the hyphenation, if I don't know what this word is, it seems like ses qui blah, blah, blah. Also, if someone wants to know, that is the word for when using long and obscure words. That is the term. Uh, other important part of the apps is, uh, are the fonts. So the fonts have multiple, uh, multiple functionalities for your app. Uh, they're a static choice. So what font you have affects how users will perceive your app, basically. Fonts are also a technical choice. It depends how large of a font did you pick, what glyphs are in the font, how the layout of the font and sizing of the font will work also. Uh, also fonts are a functional choice because if you pick a wrong font and you have a lot of text, user might not be able, might not want to read all the text. If you pick the font that is good for reading, that might help users to use your app. I will talk more about that later. Uh, also don't use the same font for like a banking app and for games and some, on a, some apps. Uh, also, fonts are copyrightable. Don't just Google and download. You need to make sure that the asset you're using, you have the rights to use. And it's, if you're pirating it, it's even more obvious because that's the first thing that you're showing to the users that you are using some pirate and font. Uh, how we control fonts is by font family. So we just set the font family and load something. It's called font family because someone decided that they might like want to put multiple fonts in a family and then use that. Uh, the logic is that for certain weights, like bold or not bold, a uh, framework will pick one of the fonts and use that. You can also use just the font without the font family, but again, it's the, the attribute name is font family. There is a list of these robot fonts on the Android. Do you just know the sans serif part of the name? I will explain that later. Uh, again, uh, Google guys are trying to improve here. So if all the apps would like use some popular font, it's a waste of time. If font is like one megabyte and you download 10 apps, you would waste 10 megabytes. But if you put that, uh, that font in some cache and you share it, uh, then it will optimize the memory usage and apps will need to, will be smaller. So uh, you can use this auto downloadable fonts. It's in the support library. It can work on API 14. Uh, so what, what's going on here? So you request the fonts from the font provider. If using that wizard in Android Studio for downloadable fonts, the font provider will be the Play Store font provider, and it will download you fonts that you are requiring. Uh, also, do note that you need to preload the fonts before you use them. I will explain you on the next screen why. So here is the process how you do it in Android. Basically, edit or pick combo, more fonts, and then you pick the the, the fonts you want. Also, they have like a font library that you can use. I'm guessing all their, their, their mentions are the fonts they are free or not. So it automates all the process. But what it generates in the, in the manifest is this. And this part is important because the first one says, okay, when you first run the app, you download me a font. Okay, that might work. 
The second one says, when you install the app, you might uh, download me a font. Uh, I had this exact problem with these two lines, like you know, two hours before this presentation. App was crashing. I did not change anything. The thing was, I installed the app from the Android Studio without the internet. And then, since it was not installed from the Play Store, it did not trigger that second one. And it did not have the network connection to trigger the first one. And then the app crashed because it, in the code, it's using the exact font that was not present there. So do keep that in mind. Is this valuable to you enough or not? Because when integrating with the rest of the system, it creates strange bugs. And now these uh, two <coughs> the terms. So uh, what are serifs? Serifs are these small lines that you can see on the ends of the, of the letters. Uh, serif fonts mean that they have those small lines, basically. Uh, serif fonts are, some people say, they are easier to read because those small lines lead the eye between the characters and between the lines. Uh, also, if you have like a huge text, if it's serif, serifs help to kind of connect the text even without reducing the line spacing. Uh, if you have a small text, you should use the sans serif fonts. Sans means without, so fonts without serifs will have the names beginning with sans serif. So uh, you should use those to fit more text, to create small text and things like that. Uh, also, none of the default Android like settings or launchers usually don't use the ser uh, serif fonts. So if you want to be in with the crowd, don't use serif fonts. But again, you might like want that effect, so you could put that. Uh, also, again, this is just font family. I'll just show you this is a serif font and this is a sans serif font. You can see for this font, the elements look like kind of disconnected, right? It's, it's not, it, it is two words, but for this, it definitely looks like one visual group. So user will perceive this is one thing. So if you want something to be read fast and be glanced at, at fast, you could use this serif trick. Uh, so the, there is another option to customize the text in Android. It's called spans. Uh, spans could be used, can be used from code and provide a lot of uh, flexibility and you could modify each of the letters in the, in the text used specifically. So you don't need to like, create three text used to have large, red, small text. You create just one and apply spans to, to intervals. So spans are basically uh, micro objects that are attached to intervals. Also, there are character spans and paragraph spans. Uh, what... Uh, what spans do is they can modify the paint, uh, paint of the text, they can modify the layout of the text, they can draw on canvas whatever you want. You might even want to create a span that logs that something or anything. But uh, do know that when implementing spans, you need to keep implementing and using spans, you need to keep in, uh, keep in mind that some spans will trigger uh, text resize. A text resize is bad. So, if you're just updating the appearance, implement update appearance or use the, font, uh, the spans that implement update appearance. If you want to change layout, implement update layout. It's not much of a problem to implement those. It's just a marker interfaces, so Android knows what your custom spans are doing. And for, the, and for these spans in the platform, it just helps you to know what the span is doing also. So uh, spans can only be applied from code. You need to like, create character style. That's the base class of all spans. Then you create spanable string. More, more words about that later. You get that character sequence. Then you use this set span. Uh, the set span takes four arguments. So it's the span object. It's the start of the span, the end of the span. And there are some flags. The flags indicate should new text be put in span or not. And here are some of the useful spans. So it's foreground color, background color, blah, blah, blah. There is also absolute color. You can see that I apply this to only the first two letters. You can use image span to change like one letter. Now the A is the Android guy. There is a type face span, but it's for P only. Bullet span is a paragraph span and things like that. Okay, so the, the classes I talked a little bit earlier, uh, there are optimizations with the spans to avoid the setting text, uh, text uh, resize problem. So uh, when setting spans, we need to create some of the, uh, one of these classes. So these are kind of named confusingly, but there is an explanation why they exist. So because set text requires text relayout layout that calls into native code that creates temporary objects, it's kind of wasteful. 
So if we could avoid set text for setting spans, it would be good. And there is a way for that. So uh, we need to use a uh, class that we want, uh, that, that's applicable to our case. So if you want to have, <coughs> if you don't need to change either the markup or the text content, you create a span string. If you want to change just the markup, the spans, and not the text content, you create the spanable string. And if you want to change both the spanable, uh, the content and the market, you create the spanable string builder. So there are also three interfaces that make this more clear. So span, immutable text, immutable markup, spanable, immutable text, mutable markup, and editable enables you to edit both of those. That would be it. Thank you for the intention. If there are any questions. Some questions? After the. After the. Okay, thank you.